Hey kids, welcome to Styles Rumble Harmony Rigging Linear Animation and Tutorial Guide thing. <laughs> so today we're going to take a little step back in breaking down some of the mechanics that are used to actually create something complex like a walk cycle. Because if you're brand new to animation, if you're if you're just getting started, starting with a walk cycle is really setting yourself up for some frustration because there's a lot of mechanics in there you're not familiar with. So we're going to break some of that down. Now the best thing to start with is just the ball. Think about how you could bounce a basketball versus a tennis ball or a ping pong ball or a medicine ball. They're all going to bounce differently. And it's the perfect thing to do if you're interested in, in exploring timing and spacing with your animation, whether you're doing cutout stuff or you're doing classical stuff. The ball is the perfect non-invasive object that you can play around with that stuff. Once you've been playing around with the ball for a while, another exercise that's really common for beginning animators is the pendulum. So here, I've set myself up a little arm. I'm playing around with it, so let me reset the animation. So I've been playing around with this little arm. It's just three pairs of drawings and pegs. So if you want to set this up for yourself, you just haul in three drawing peg pairs, which you've created for convenience for yourself, and then name them appropriately. The top is going to control the middle, and then the middle is going to control the end or the hand. You can actually draw an arm if you're feeling real fancy about it. And then just set up a very basic hierarchy. If you don't know anything about rigging, you should be able to set this little guy up for yourself and set the pivot points on it. I've got a whole slew of videos on how to do the that sort of stuff. But get yourself a little arm and have it broken up into different pieces. And then we're going to just start at the top. All right. So I'm going to get rid of these keys so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing and zoom in to my timeline. It doesn't zoom vertically, which is kind of a annoying if you want to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so we'll start at the top. Top of the hierarchy. We always start at the top of the hierarchy. You've heard me rant about that before. And I'm going to swing it this way. And I'm going to control drag that key to the end. So now both of these are going to be identical. And I'm going to throw one in the middle, going the other way. So you can see I'm keeping my keys to this top peg. I'm not putting keys all the way down. So I'm opening this guy up and making sure that I'm just putting stuff on the top so that because I don't want to get muddy down here and have a bunch of extra keys that I'm going to have to fight against later. And because the first frame and the last frame are identical, whenever we're working with cycles, we're just going to collapse down and hide that last frame. And now it's not going to have that double frame at the end. So here we have super even timing. The guy's just swimming back and forth, and there's not a lot of personality to it. So we can start with our basics, just a little ease out here. I'm using the ease multiple parameters, and I'm going to put 44 down here. And I just know from experience that that's something that feels about right for me with this, uh, this sort of an animation. But you definitely want to play around with this and get more familiar with it so that you, you get that feeling of how well it's going to work for you at which speed. And I'm going to hit, instead of apply, I'm going to hit apply next. And that'll bump me over to the next keyframe. It'll just jump me over. And this is the top of this side of the arc. So we also want to ease in here because as the thing starts to get to the end of its trajectory, it's going to slow down because gravity is starting to fight against the velocity that it's got. And then it's going to slowly ease out again. So I'm actually going to hit 44 on both sides of this fly so that you can see that this is the speed. It's going pretty quick. And then it's going to slowly hang around at the top of the arc and then move back out. And then this is the beginning of this one, so it's also going to get a 44. Now, if I play through it, collapse this guy, and I play through it, you can see it's starting to look, it has a little bit more personality. It's, it's kind of lagging at the ends, and it's got a little bit more speed down here through the middle. And the next thing we want to think about is how this lower arm is going to act. Because if I do this, where I'm like, okay, let's say this wants to swing this far, we can control click that and drag it over. Oops. So now we've got identical keyframes there. And then once it hits this side on this frame, it's going to swing out that way. So if we line it up like this, so at the top of this guy's arc, this guy's at its farthest point. And on the top of the arc this way, this one's at its farthest point. Now if we watch it like this, you can see that the bottom part doesn't feel right. Because this is cut out and everything's digital, what we can do is actually just drag this frame over a couple. So let's say we'll move it over two and see how that feels. But then we need something here. So we actually have to go over here because we have to think of our cycle and go back to hit F6, 
Now drag that frame here. And now we don't actually want this one to be here. We want this to be here because remember this frame here and this one is identical. So all I'm doing is taking each of these frames and just moving them over two. And then once they get to the end, they cycle back to the beginning and then move over two. So now if we watch it, you can see that the lower arm is swinging at a little bit of a slower pace. So this one's hit the maximum range of its arc and this lower arm is swinging past that and then it's starting to swing down. But it's still not totally working out because now this one doesn't have any slow out. It's just here it hits its maximum arc and then just immediately starts leaving and heading that way. We can actually add in those eases first. 44, apply next, 44, 44, 44, and add in all those eases. And I'm gonna grab this one, move it over, bring this one around here, like that, so it's going around the thing, and then bring this one over too. So now I've put the ease in first, and then I'm dragging the keys forward. And two's not feeling quite enough, so I might wanna even move it over so that it's four frames moved to the right. So now it's starting to feel a little bit looser. So this, this top one, feels a little bit stiff, like it's in control of what's happening. And the lower one's got a little bit more of a dangly, uh, kind of a reactionary movement. And the last thing you wanna do is this lowest one. And we're gonna do exactly what we did with this upper one. So here's our center. We're gonna make that its highest point. And over here, we're gonna make this its highest point and pull it over here. Then we're gonna set the ease on it and we're gonna bring it over. This one went four, so we may wanna go six with this one. Okay, so we're gonna go back two, four, six. Boom. That one's going to be here. This one's gotta move over six. So it's going all the way down here. Two, four, six. And then this one's getting dragged over here. So it's a little bit of a mind trick to get used to dragging keys around the cycle that way from the end to the beginning. But it's a good practice to get into because you can see that But by doing things this way, you can do it a little bit quicker than if you eyeball it. And of course, once you get to this point, if you still don't feel like things are working out, then you can go in and tweak. This is a good exercise to get used to and then you can translate the information to an arm swing, all right? So one thing about an arm that's differing from this pendulum, if the arm, let's say that for, I'm gonna draw a little body so you can see. So if this is the body, I have a tiny head and he's walking along like this. His arm is never going to look like that because the bones in your arm don't don't really think that's super fun. So if your arm is going back this way, your arm is never going to get beyond straight. Your elbow can't bend back that way. That's that that's an uncomfortable way for your arm to be. And if you're doing a rubber hose show, you can get this far. Like that much arm torque is possible if the character is made of a, a rubbery and they're just kind of like down the street. Um, but it, for the most part, your arc going this way is not going to be as steep as that. So you can bring that down so it doesn't get that far. And now his arm swing is going to feel a little bit less like it's shattering his elbow. <laughs> and of course, if he's really like given a good march, then when he's pulling his arm up this way, then he's probably going to come a lot farther and have more drag on this arm. And of course I keep hiding and, and bringing back this uh, keyframe here and then copying these frames over to the first frame here so that my cycle is going to be preserved. So he's gonna pull his arm up really high. And then I actually even want it to stay a lot longer. I wanna like keep it. And his arm is happening, his hand is happening a little bit too late there. So let's, uh, so you can see it's hitting here and then the hand is swinging really wildly like this. So what I'm gonna do is take this frame here in the middle and bring that over there so that once it hits this point, it's already on its way. Hopefully that makes sense. So I've just taken the halfway point and pulled it back 
I even want that to go higher. Ooh. And then copy that to the end so your loop loops. Let's see. Yep. Yep. Okay, so this is, feels like it's hitting something. Thunk. 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 And that's because uh, I've managed to have the upper arm and lower arm hit that high point at the same time. Thunk. See? They're, so they're both slamming into the highest point at the same time and that's what's taking away this lower arms uh feeling of free to free movement here so what i have to do is take this frame and then move it back so i have to pull this back again and his hand i feel like has to happen a lot later there you go so he's getting a little bit more of a big swing and his hands got a lot more flop to it and it can feel at times like a game of guess and check but it's it's not necessarily the wrong way to think about it um, as you animate more, you are going to get more familiar about what with what you would want things to do, and you have a little bit of a quicker workflow to get to that point. But especially if you're uh, brand new to animation, you're just starting to work on it, and you're working towards working as a cutout animator, then this is not a bad way to go about it, to just set up a little simple item like this, little arm swing, and then play around with the timing and offsetting your keys from one another and see if you can get the results that you're hoping to get. We can also use this to play around with the leg. So I'm just going to bloop, reset all this and move it down here and we'll turn this guy into a foot. I just threw a little leg together and I even gave him a little toe. And the difference between the arm swing, which is a pendulum, so we've got that boop, boop, boop sort of action, or this part of the arm and the hand almost act like a secondary partner to the upper arm. It's like the upper arm is the boss and these guys are just kind of flopping along for the ride. Unless you're getting something like a real military... A uh, high step where they're bringing their hand right up to their chin there or something where they're actually giving their arms a purpose or like they're driving the arms lower arms as well but a lot of the times they're just kind of acting like a passenger the foot and the leg i've drawn a little uh graph sort of of what the foot does so it's more of um it works a little bit differently because the lower leg is a part of the walk cycle so here, our leg will stay a lot in a line. So once it hits its arc here, the lower leg catches up with this guy here, and then they have to work together to keep you from collapsing on the ground. Because if you're walking like this, like no, no one walks with their legs permanently bent all the time. You're, you're getting that stability of a straight leg as it's on the ground here. And then as your thigh starts to hit its maximum trajectory your lower leg will actually break and, and not like snap off and you'll fall down and be in really sad but it'll break the straightness so we've got a lot of straightness here then it breaks and it'll go beyond what the upper leg is doing because your lower this is where you're going to get your other foot starting to come out here and you're transferring the weight onto the other leg so this starts to break as this hits the ground boop so you're Upper leg hits the top trajectory first. So the, this part of the swing works a little bit more like the arm, but then it hangs out straight for a while and then breaks here. So rather than that very cyclical pendulum movement, you do have to do a little bit more work on the leg. And this is the type of shape that your foot is going to have. So you're gonna get this motion as opposed to a pendulum shape like this. Okay, so this is your foot hitting and this is where your foot peels off and starts to come around back to this again. And you can get some uh, personality out of these feet where when it hits the ground, you can have your toe can linger a little bit like that before you get that snap. Or when it's peeling off here, you can kind of have your, your foot actually have be a little bit reluctant to peel off the ground and have your toe linger and draw foot today. All right, so you can have it peel off a little bit in, in more of a creative and fun way, but overall you're gonna have this teardrop sideways shape to this leg movement. Boop, boop. Okay, so once you get your leg working, you got a little bit of a walk there. If you're doing the stick man thing, you can actually just duplicate this leg. 
So make sure you're creating, you're not creating a clone, you're actually keep creating an independent copy with your paste special. And we can just grab these keys and then just uh, move them around. So now these guys are back here. There we go. So we just take, we just offset them. Our Both of our legs are working at the same pace and timing, but we don't actually have to do the work of actually animating both the legs. So this duplicating thing is not a great thing to do if you're working on an animated series because you don't want to use two left legs on a rigged character and then somebody else brings it into their scene and it's really it's rigged in a very unexpected way. So you would actually have to go to the trouble of animating both your legs. But if you're working on an independent project or something and you need to save a little bit of time, you can do this sort of thing. And it, again, another reason why knowing how to rig and understanding a little bit more of the technical side of this program is going to help you no matter what you're doing, whether it's indie animation or working in the studio, because it can save you time on something like this. So if you are a newer animator and you want to start thinking about walk cycles and practicing stuff like this, I highly recommend working on the two of them separately, creating some little stick figures to hang around with and, and practice animating with. Um, because it is going to save you a little bit of a headache. Um, because if you're practicing using something very simple like this and not spending a lot of your time worrying about the complexity of the pants and the details, the fork here and pockets and sneakers and all of that stuff, it, it's a waste of time if you're learning how to do a pendulum swing. Like if you're just learning how to swing the arm, don't practice on a really fancy anime style rig. Just you're wasting your time. And it's not a waste of time to animate something cool. But if your task is learning, if your goal is to learn how to do something better, break it down into the task you're trying to learn. Don't bog yourself down with additional tasks that are taking away from that learning because it's inefficient. You're going to learn much more by using this little stick man arm and stick legs than it by spending twice as or three times as much time with something really complex. So hopefully I can edit this into something that's comprehensible. <laughs> I'd love to see your stick man animations if you go about doing any because it's it's a good way to learn. It's really and it's really fun. I mean you can you can now because I'm just got these little stick legs and I haven't got any other stuff to worry about, I can play around with the timing of this and getting different types of walks. So here instead of my leg I could do like a real goose step and stomp and see what that does. Like we're getting a big stomp. Smack, smack, smack. And here we can drag it really till the last minute. We can drag these frames around and now see what this leg is doing compared to the first leg. Okay, so now we're getting something totally different in about 14 seconds. Turn this into a run. See how you can, you can play around with that, get some more bounce in the step. You can even throw in a little, throw in a little bean character. See if you can figure out the bounce. <laughs> you can see he's got a weird, like one-sided flamingo limp. Okay, so do some stick man legs and arms and practice those basics before you go worrying too much about the hip tilt and the shoulder perspective and the things that I kind of went over a little in the other video. Um, don't feel like you have to get right into those advanced things and don't feel like if your character isn't turning in your first walk cycle, uh, getting enough shoulder perspective, like just make a stick man. Never be ashamed to make stick man. Save yourself some time and learn quicker by really focus firing on what you're trying to learn instead of mucking around too much. Okay. The next video, I think I'm going to do some stuff with posing and expressions. But I'm not totally sure. Who knows? We never know. I have no plan. You know this. Thanks for dropping by. Like, share, subscribe, all those things that internet people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video.